Released last year, Pickbox Into the Dead was a big step forward for the endless runner genre. While not the first horror-themed first-person runner, its excellent graphics and sound design really made it an immersive experience that stood out from the crowd. Escape from Doom from Los Angeles-based indie developer Trigger Happy is the latest release in this style game. To say that it's similar to Into the Dead would be an understatement. In fact, it's almost identical. And while there's not much in the way of innovation here, that's not necessarily a bad thing. One of the first things you'll notice that separates this title from Into the Dead is the fact that it's priced as a premium game, with a noticeable absence of ads. The progression system seems reasonably fair. With upgrades coming at a steady pace, the early game never feels like too much of a grind. As you make your way out of a crumbling tomb, you're faced with wave after wave of mummified undead, all of which are interested in eating your face. The only way to survive this endless onslaught is to do your best to dodge them or take them out with an assortment of weapons. You'll eventually die of course, but with a bit of practice this can be somewhat delayed. Different weapons and perks become available as you complete sets of challenges and raise your rank. These challenges range from easy, like reaching a certain distance or killing a number of mummies, to downright frustrating, like having to collect 150 gems in a single run. The difficulty of the challenges increases significantly later in the game, but fortunately the weapons get much more powerful too. The graphics are fantastic, especially the gorgeous skybox with the sun shining through a distant sandstorm over the pyramids. The sound design gives you a great feeling of being lost in the desert, especially running through crypts and sandstorms. This is rounded out nicely by the excellent menu music, which blends traditional Middle Eastern tunes with heavy rock, similar to what the Tea Party did with Prince of Persia's Sands of Time. There are a few control methods available, including a tilt mechanism. I stuck with what felt the most intuitive, and that is tapping on the left and right side of the screen to navigate, and tapping in the center of the screen to shoot. Steering the hero does feel a little bit slow and unrealistic, as if somehow hindered when turning. Weapons are picked up from chests. As long as you've got a key, running over a chest will give the player a random weapon from those already unlocked. Keys are obtained from pots you kick over as you're running, and are the rarer of pickups, with gems being the most common. Gems are your primary source of currency and can be used to unlock weapons and perks earlier than normal, purchase keys, or to skip challenges. The first weapon you'll unlock is a pistol, a basic weapon that's only really useful against the early enemies. You'll eventually be able to unlock weapons like dual revolvers and the shotgun. So far, my personal favorite has to be the crossbow. Even though it takes a long time to reload, it takes out multiple enemies in one hit. Perks are also a nice addition that can grant bonuses as you play. Things like carrying multiple weapons, running faster, carrying more ammunition, or being able to hang onto gems when you're struck by a mummy that's too close. Taking damage in the game that doesn't immediately result in death causes the player to drop some gems, hinders vision through blood being sprayed across the screen, and possibly most devastating, temporarily stunning the hero, making him unable to be steered. Sandstorms will drop visibility dramatically, and temples are tightly packed hallways with shredded curtains hanging from the ceiling. These particular segments can feel a little bit cheap, as it's nearly impossible to see what's coming ahead of you. I did experience a few issues with the initial release, like enemy pop-in, where mummies that should be crawling start off as standing, and unskippable downtime between runs. Because death is inevitable and frequent, it's one of those games that deserves some form of quick restart functionality. One of the things that stood out for me the most was that stage progression quickly started to feel stale. You'll go from an open field, to a sandstorm, to an open field with harder enemies, to a sandstorm in a narrow path, to a temple every single time. I'd love to see some form of randomization or alternating sets of stages. Overall, Escape from Doom is a reasonably fun title. The fairness of the IAP system and lack of ads sets it apart from other titles. It could use a little bit of work, but as far as endless runners go, it's pretty damn good. I've already put about four hours into the game, and I still feel like I've got a lot of things to unlock. The Universal app is available right now for $1.99 from the App Store. Thank you for joining me for today's review. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on the latest mobile games. This has been Alex for GameMob, that's www.gamemob.com.